Yeah, I will. Hi, all. Th thanks. Thanks for joining. Um, this is the May 4th Star Wars edition, although I don't think we dropped any uh, images of such um, IPFS implementers working group sync. Uh, so this first one after IPFS thing 2023. Uh, and right, this is intended for those who are deeply involved creating or highly leveraging or modifying uh, IPFS implementations. And so um, with that, we will we will jump in. Um, I can, I'm happy to share screen. Others feel free to take. I do my best to take notes while we go, but I'm not great at talk, listening well, and typing. Um, so that might that might suffer. Uh, yeah, and other agenda notes can certainly get meeting notes or yeah things for the agenda. Please feel free to add and put notes in line or down below. And I guess with that, uh, let, let's hit it. There weren't really the only previous action item there was is like getting a look at the Unix FS spec. Clearly it's just not a priority given that that has uh, been open for months right now. And so I'm not gonna, uh, you know, not gonna try to make a push on it right now. So I think we'll just drop that one. Uh, we'll get that across the line when there is, when there's a clear need um, for it. So I don't think anything we have to review here. On IPFS thing, again, we'd love to have others uh, feel free to speak here, but I think on behalf of folks, just wanna say thanks. I know a lot of work went into preparing for that. A lot of people on this call were track leading, giving presentations, et cetera. And that's not, that's, that's not free. Uh, I think hope, hopefully it's worthwhile, but it definitely take, takes time. I think I tend to have a budget, like any, any minute spoken is like usually at least an hour of prep behind the scenes making that happen. And so uh, that, that, that was a lot, but th thanks all. And by, by many accounts seemed like a very successful event. On the recap, Aside, I saw that on the IPFS blog, there is a kind of more general recap. I think some of the highest, I actually didn't read through it, but one of the values I always get out of these recaps is that it has the direct links to the various playlists for the different tracks so you can quickly find um, videos. So um, yeah, so th there's that, you know, the Andres IPFS team had done a recap of their, you know, kind of some of our takeaways. It's not exhaustive. It probably has more of a bias towards things that I was seeing or grabbing from people, but, you know, did want to give visibility to that. I, I don't know if there's, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily anything earth shattering there, but we did try to summarize some of our takeaways. So that's the second link. Uh, yeah, but I guess, is there anything else that others want to call out or say regarding IPFS thing? Watch the videos. They're really good. Sweet. Okay. Um, well, very, yeah, great. Well, let's, we'll, we'll move I mean, on. There's certainly more thing. content than anyone who was at the event could have consumed. Yeah. So, so I think like IPFS thing is like an ongoing thing yeah. for the <laughs> next like couple of weeks as people try to like recover their emails and their GitHub issues, and then also go and watch all the videos <laughs> that they didn't get to see because so many tracks, so little time. Yeah, no, very 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 fair yeah it's I, I haven't been the most disciplined at doing this but i feel like a little bit every day is the only way to win that battle um because it's like it's not not possible to like at least from my end like carve out enough time to like make a big dent in in a short period of time it has to be like the trickle effect cool i i think we've generally had this i just kind of explicitly called it out just an imp implementation update corner where any implementation they can share about things that are going on uh, make others aware in case that spurs other conversation uh so i, I put some of the endres implementations uh great to see yeah we got iro um and ian loved it if you if we i think so andres and iro can go first but would love to hear anything happening on your end but you you know no pressure of course but that that's the intended intent of this portion um so i'll just quickly blaze through uh on the andres side so right helia the js implementation to replace js ipfs you know the v1 api was out presentations were given at ipfs thing we even had some people, particularly the D-Climate folks, um, like during the event converted from using JS IPFS to Helia. Generally, the sentiment has been has been good, but we haven't really rung the bell. Like we haven't done Twitter, blog posts, et cetera, about it. Um, in part because we don't have the messaging and the corresponding plan for how we're deprecating JS IPFS. 
Uh, and so that is really going to be a focus for the Indres engineers that are working on this, which is you know part-time Alex Patsidis, but we're also using some of the IPFS uh, tooling folks that work on companion and desktop uh, with Russell and Nishant to kind of come over. We're, you know, we have multiple, we have a few people who can spend part of their time working on Helia and just get them together so that we can get over this migration or deprecation uh, hump. So that that's coming more to come there. And I think once we have that plan in place, then I'll feel good about, you know, marketing that Helia is out there. Um, but that's, that's what I'd say on, on Helia. And anyone, please feel free to inject if you have questions. Otherwise, I'll keep keep rolling uh, rolling down. Uh, right, Boxo. I think we've mentioned it to this group. This was where we kind of took the a lot of the functionality from Kubo, but trying to put it into a more general library, a, a toolkit of a functionality for anyone who's trying to do an IPFS implementation in Go. Um, so we can kind of get out of the business of trying to make Kubo do all things for all people. Uh, you know, so that. That effort was worked on a lot of last quarter. You, there was some talk given to that at the IPFS thing. Uh, we have one of the efforts was to consolidate a bunch of repos in the you know Go repos in the IPFS uh, GitHub organization. That consolidation has all been done within Boxo and IPFS implementations like uh, Kubo, I guess the Bifrost gateway and others like I guess even Lotus and IPFS cluster all depending on it. Um, but we kind of the, to, to finish this off, we need to go make clear on all these repos that we have consolidated that um, those those repos aren't maintained anymore. And if you want the maintained version, you should go to the consolidated Boxo version. Um, so that that's coming up. Also, right, Boxo is a bit of a hypothesis that uh, if we provide a better toolkit, sorry, toolbox for people to make their own implementations, that more implementations will come and that there will be less people you know, building more Frankensteins around Kubo or kind of blocking themselves relating on relying on new APIs to come into Kubo. Um, so that that's a hypothesis. We'd love to kind of get that tested and validated. And part of that would be actually working with any groups that are trying to do something more custom. And if there's things that they need from Box so that we would prioritize that. Um, so yeah, I think we're interested in kind of doing some more white glove consulting. Uh, you know, there were some groups that really raised their hands during IPFS thing, uh, but we'll you know, we haven't moved that agenda forward, but that, that's kind of where we're at on the Boxo front. And on uh, Kubo, there's a new release should be coming out early next week. We've been in RC phase for a couple of weeks now. I'll link to the change log. Um, and you know, we had put together before IPFS thing, a, 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 road, a roadmap of some of the things we were hoping to do in the next quarter. Uh, one of those elements was around getting reader privacy into the DHT. Uh, you know, that was a topic of discussion at IPFS thing about, hey, should we go directly to getting reader privacy or should we take on uh, this the, the composable DHT element as a first step so that we synchronize on that, which then makes further DHT improvements like we move the reader privacy work easier where we won't have to synchronize as much. Um, and that's looking like the way at least the Andres engineers are, are leaning, um, but we're still actively planning that. So undoubtedly what we listed here is the roadmap is going to change. Uh, we'll get that updated here in the next week or two. Um, but that's that's kind of where, where, where Kubo is. And I guess Bifrost Gateway, anything you want to share there, Dean? Um, not particularly, other than if you're curious how it is, what it is, uh, there are a whole section set, uh, set of videos and talks from IPFS thing that will help you learn more about it. Uh, it's moving on to help sort of separate out the, we'll call it the validation and rendering components that gateways do from the fetching all the stuff so that you can you can split those pieces apart. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, go go ahead, Brendan. Awesome. And Nadine, if you could link in the notes the like most relevant talks on the bypass uh, Yes, I will do that. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry to make you find a URL. I'm sure I can Google for it myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the RO side, we have uh, Come back from thing doing some stuff um mainly need to we've gotten a whole bunch of feedback from our users they're like hey i need to load kubo cities in the next to iro cities and this has just been a pressing thing that we need to figure out and so we've 
started thinking about this and started trying to figure it out. And like our main, my main response to that was like, we're no way near ready because we have to stabilize and finalize our spec to like get this to a real point where we understand what IRO is before we try to make it interop with other stuff. But uh, people are asking for it. And so we want to figure out a good way to do it. Uh, on our end, it's really easy because this is basically a process of taking our Beetle implementation and wrapping that in ways that compose well with IRO. But we got some questions that I thought uh, would be valuable for this group, specifically around um, the IPFS scheme, like IPFS colon slash slash, and like trying to land some precision around what that means. Because like end users are just like, IRO doesn't emit URIs that can, or URLs that can resolve with this thing. And I was like, oh, we don't really like, we don't have a plan for that. And we don't, <laughs> and so like, and we don't want to mess, like, to be honest, I, 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 I'll link the issue, but we had a user saying like, you know, there should really be like an IRO scheme. And to me, that was immediately like kind of problematic because that's just kind of pushing our implementation farther away from the IPFS side of things. And I was like, that's not, I think that that's really not doing a, a good service to like big tent IPFS um, universe. But at the same time, I felt like we had some ambiguity about how we would go about like putting IRO stuff in the IPFS scheme or maybe like not doing that. Like, I just don't know what the right answer is here. So I wanted to like service that as a thing that I'd like to probably start to understand async. I don't want to take too much meaning time for that, but that's a thing that our users have asked for. It would be really nice to start to understand that. I'm going to probably just like, pull the relevant IPIPs, pull the relevant spec that exists and understand how we may or may not extend and try and understand from this group what the right path forward is for um, that specific problem of the IPFS scheme um, and a protocol handler. It's like, I don't know, it seems really tightly coupled to UnixFS in my head. And like, I know that we have some like IPLD stuff in there as well that like, you know, it's just a conversation worth having. And so I, I don't think we're the only ones who like, have this concern or this like issue, but I'm also, I mean, all honestly, I'm like under read on the IPFS scheme in general. So I need to like do my homework before I even jump in. But yeah, I, I, would, I would love to chat. I'd love to chat more about that or if they're interopy things or if there are other like spec ish things that are like where we're close, but the problem is there's like, you know, we need support for large blocks in places where we don't. And we need yeah. to figure out what are the places to modify specs to uh, accommodate that. Um, I think is like there's a bunch of people who need them in a variety of ways, and so figuring out how in the in the big, big tenty way we can like modify things to make it work is is cool. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have let's, more. Let's chat but about it. But yeah, I mean, I, does it make yeah. sense to like I I just put it at the end of the meeting, like get through some of these other things, but then maybe. If, Anytime that's extra, we can do a bit of a a bootstrap totally. of, of where we're at, and any, whoever wants to hang around for that conversation can. Is that yeah, that good? yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Just to round out our update, like I think the biggest thing we owe to that conversation is a formalization of what we have built in IROs, so that it can be and a like a set of conformance tests to that, so that if we try and do any interop work there, that like there's a lot of absolute clarity on what's coming from the IRO side, so that we don't end up wavering too much. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that's the so that's what we're working on on our end right now, and it'd be great to save me time at the end for for more chats. Which, great, okay. which just sort of interestingly brings to the the first thing on the on the board is related to the like <laughs> sort of I guess the the URI scheme, which seems mm -hmm. to basically be the gateway API, right? Um, right, and. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Let's, 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 before we move there, yeah. Yeah. Is there uh, is there anything you want to share, Ian, on on your end? Uh, I mean, I can just say what we're doing. Um, at the moment, we're working on. Uh, just can you hear me? Is yeah. yeah. Yep, you're good. Yep. Um, uh, we're working on mainly uh, cross spectrum interrupt tests. So we already interrupt test against GoLib PDP uh, in in Kubo. Uh, but getting us into that that repo, which tests against all the languages, all the things, um, and the other one is Quick, which is almost there. Um, yeah. Okay, so you're you're really at, you're in the libp to p layer right now. Is it sounds like is your focus? Uh, I guess that yeah, both those are libp to p. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Which is great. Make 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 sense. Um, awesome. Awesome. And do. 
it's just like is there I assume there is already sorry is there already an existing JVM uh, quick implementation like how are you just having to wrap someone else's uh, JVM based quick implementation? So we're using uh, the, there's a network async networking library we're using called Netty uh, mm -hmm. that has a quick implementation uh, which is itself just a wrapper around Quiche uh, the Rust implementation from Cloudflare. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's Rust under the hood. <laughs> Great, all kinds of, we got a lot of abstractions happening here. <laughs> got it, okay. Which itself wraps libtls from, like there, it's, it's, which is a C. Yes, it uses it's boring bad. SSL, yeah. Oh, there it is, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's gnarly. <laughs> Cool. Okay. So uh, sounds, sounds good. Is, are you getting, is there any, I, I know we don't have a lot of lib P2P direct folks here, but are you getting engagement on how you get the interoperability going on the, like getting into the lib P2P interoperability test suite, et cetera? Like, is, is there anything you need from the lib P2P team given we can. Sh no, it's, it's all good. Okay. We've got the Zig, Zig PR to, to add themselves, which we can just copy. So. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> okay. Rock on, rock on in. Well, um, yeah, th th thanks for sharing and great, great to have you here. Is there any other implementation updates anyone wants to share? I guess you created another I implementation recently, right, Adine? <laughs> I, I guess I did. I spent, I guess, whatever it was, an hour yesterday making an implementation that just takes a car file, ships your data off to an indexer, and then serves it over Bitslaw. Uh, and uh, the idea was like, that takes like an hour. Uh, getting that into Kubo takes much more than one hour. Um, <laughs> and and one of those <laughs> is like, we can use to like test things because the alternative was like, oh, the people who run IPNI stuff right now is Elastic IPFS. So I could ship to someone with that or a Filecoin SP or, you know, just run a thing on your local machine. Um, so I think this is, we'll say it's, it's a good start. Um, but we're also learning more about like, what are the libp2p packages? What are the sorts of networking packages people need bundled up for them, right? Which is how to deal with, you know, all of your NAT configurations, how to deal with when you're out of options, also spinning up relays, informing people what happens and the fact that, you know, relays are okay, but less good than if you're actually reachable because sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work 100% of the time. Um, and basically like a bunch of the edges around that, which I think it would be, it would be good for either, you know, the lib P2P implementations or, or, or wrappers around them and things like Boxo to help just give people like the, the batteries included getting started libraries mm -hmm. with some explanations that let them opt out. There's like some yeah. learnings there. Thanks Torfin for being a, uh, uh, a guinea pig. Yeah, well, and do you foresee this like becoming a kind of first class example within Boxo? I think that some of yeah, I think we could totally take some of these and and make them Boxo examples. I think we've already gotten requests for we'll call it like libp2p batteries included things mm -hmm. um, for IPFS implementations specifically. Like, what are things IPFS implementations are likely to want to have batteries included? Mm -hmm. um, and also, we'll start to see things evolve. Like, we've already seen. There are already multiple implementations out there that are IPFS imp IPFS implementations backed by chunks of car files, but they're all very big things. They're like Elastic IPFS or like a Filecoin SP. But mm -hmm. you know, you could you could also do there are reasons you might want to do something smaller locally and and sort of see, you know, give space for people to evolve that and show how like yeah, here's the simple way. Here's what happens when you make this more, you know, you can take that and extend it and make it bigger. Got it. In the same way we have, we'll call it, I suspect that Ira will be making uh, an insanely better progress than what has been happening with the uh, the no work on it in many, many years file store implementation in Go to say, hey, sometimes you just have a bunch of files that live on disk and you'd like to leave them on disk exactly as they are, but then also serve them, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think like these are the kinds of library-ish components that people need to have in order to build the thing that does exactly what they need it to for their use case, um, which right now is is hard. See, 
file store experiment in Kubo for more details on hard. Okay, th 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 thanks, Adine. Um, very, very good. Well, I will I'll, I'll move us forward. Obviously, we don't have Lytle here. He's back next week. Um, this was my quick canvassing, or sorry, surveying of where some of the IP IPs are at. Yeah, I, I guess, do you want to speak to the first one, Adine, and if there's anything relevant for this group to either page into, or I don't know if there's, yeah, I, I don't know, anything you would yeah. want to say on this guy? Yeah, I mean, in short, like, uh, we're starting to, in order to start using gateways, we're, this is using car support and block support, like the trustless gateway stuff is basically using the gateways as a transport. Right. Mm -hmm. It's using HTTP as a transport for blocks uh, to do verifiable things. To do this, you sometimes need to describe segments of data, not all the data. So not the whole file, but part of the file. And you know, not the nested, maybe all the directories and all the files in them, or maybe just the directory listing of all the stuff. Um, and so the spec is trying to have a way of expressing this. Um and so this 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 was designed to take, we'll say, the 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 easier approach than figuring out in like an IPLD sense what's like a better what's what's an IPLD URI scheme. This is like the or the minimal set of things that people are already doing with gateways. How can we do this without making it sound too Unix FSE, perhaps? Um, and so, like, I think this is if if you are interested in you know how you want to add in different things to the uri spec or uh, the uri scheme or you're interested in or you run gateways or you're trying to figure out how you would use this like some review would be good uh, especially to help you know make sure that the 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 names and the concepts sound reasonable and that if there are like clarifications or questions or things that that seem missing that um those show up but you know, all goes well. This will be our our first uh, partial graph HTTP protocol fetching protocol that that uses like a graph name as opposed to say car mirror, which is also very good, but it's designed for syncing, which is a a different use case. Um, I suspect mm -hmm. the first of multiple HTTP protocols, but we're starting. Uh, so that's that's that one. Um, cool. Th th thanks, Adine. Yeah. Uh, as, yeah, unless I, you have something to say about the bad bits stuff. No, I I don't. I see Tor Torben looks like you're also adding some comments about bad bad bits. Yeah, just throwing it in there so it doesn't uh get packed too deep into the backlog. But there was a request from Bifrost for consideration to uh potentially have a reference implementation that included Hector's patches and then uh, the longer term consideration, they want us to think about whether or not we can do a native uh, implementation in Kubo. Um, and then uh, we kind of had a challenge riding on them that I did pitch to them, Adin, uh, which is that they need to be thinking about this like denial of sharing across operators and access to an interface that makes this easier for small operators or individual users rather than just like the enterprise level use cases. Yeah, because there there are some things, you know, I guess speaking to to Steve's like sometimes sometimes you just Frankenstein it and it's okay, uh, I guess. Uh Hector's uh you know uh, modifications work as a plugin to to Kubo at the moment. Um there's there's like a little bit of, you know, yeah, it's you have all the things that come with plugins and ways to do that. Um that'll work. Question is for people who are running, we'll call them smaller smaller nodes right or people are trying to coordinate across each other what how do you want to deal with not just a single deny list from a single you know generated source but multiple deny lists because i suspect most normal most normal users will not uh be curating their own deny lists right they're they're trying to like get from the work of other people who have accumulated all of their you know their takedown notices and bad stuff and whatever um but if you have yeah if there are thoughts on on the compact deny list format itself cool take a look at the pr at the, the spec pr um 
if you're interested in how do we make this more regular user friendly, uh, then that's also, yeah. Uh, um, I think there's there's probably work for that that will 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 have demand because if people want this to exist, if operators, if smaller operators want this to exist without having to deal with getting their own takedown notices and whatever, then um, you know, they'll need this. I'll uh, I'll make sure that conversation happens and get the feedback back here. Yeah, I mean, in, on a related and particular, maybe on a larger scale, I mean, one of the action items from IPFS thing was that I believe Vision and Cameron uh, from PL Andrews Bifrost group were going to reboot the IPFS operators working group. Um, and so obviously that, that you know, obviously th th that that group is particularly invested in this in this topic, and hopefully that can get some momentum around pushing this forward, or you know maybe even getting a IPFS implementation that's really focused on the gateway use case and you know baking some of these things in first class. Um, yeah, so it's I know I know it's coming. I haven't seen the invite go out either. Ultimately, that should show up in Luma like all of our community events. But yeah, that'll that that'll be coming and be sort of you know, obviously somewhat re you know, potentially related to this group, but uh, you know a different audience too. Great. Were there any other IPIPs that anyone wanted to call out or make sure got uh, attention, or that people or that are actively being worked on right now? I have a small question. Just mm -hmm. maybe someone can answer this offhand. I can answer. I can look it up in the spec myself and just turn it right through. Can't find a fast answer. Uh, the compact format has these like two slashes uh, leading every line in the bad bits. Is there a reason for that? I do not recall I offhand. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know offhand. Okay, that's fine. I'll look it up in the spec. Okay. Cool. Uh, thanks. Well, you know, there's a there's a content routing uh, working group where there's been a lot of discussion on on DHTs, etc. Uh, but it's probably also worth surfacing some of those highlights here. I can speak to this Torfin, or if you would like to, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. Um, so just to make sure everybody's completely aware of the current situation, there are no Hydras operating on the network right now. Uh, may they rest in peace. Um, the immediate observation we've seen, so we've got about a day and a half worth of data, I would say that's relatively reliable right now that uh, it seems that we've actually seen improvements in a lot of areas in the speed of things that occurs in regards to lookups. Um, IP and I traffic, just to kind of catch you all up since the content routing work group has about doubled. Um, so we're, we're seeing quite a bit of uplift there, but um, the overall cost of that traffic is actually still quite a bit less than what the burden of operating the hydras itself was. So this really does look like uh, a win in so far as uh, we're accomplishing the same thing somewhat faster, um, slightly, at least in a lot of ways. Um, and uh, we're doing so utilizing, it looks like about 25% less resources to do it. Um, that's a real rough figure, but I will continue to provide updates as we gather more data. Um, that's as of this morning. So we'll see as it traffic stabilizes. It's kind of, uh, it's still a little bit hoppy around. Uh, and the RIA decentralized gateways uh, work group is also deeply looking at a lot of traffic fluctuation as the shape of the network kind of reforms itself a bit. So uh, there are a few threads. I actually will post them here for uh, anybody that's interested in kind of following up on some of these detailed discussions about the traffic changes. Um, since they've gotten a bit sparse, I'll, I'll throw that here right now. Any anything else, Steve? That I uh, didn't quite cover. Community comms, uh, also very important thing. Uh, Giannis, and thank you, Steve, so much for all of your input. Um, and and I have uh, the three of us have kind of put together some community comms to kind of break this down and put on the IPFS discussion post. Uh, I think uh, as of last night, I pretty much finished 
Uh, my component of I would love a read over. Uh, I've asked Yalis to take another quick look at it. But cool. I, I reviewed. I reviewed yesterday, Torfin. Um, yeah. Good. Th th thanks for the update. Is it okay if I jump in and say a couple things, Torfin? Yeah. W one. Uh, if this is catching you by surprise, um, be aware that it also caught us by surprise. It was not. Um, <laughs> this wasn't like we were intentionally shutting down the hydros without talking with people. Um, Unbeknownst to us, the Tydras had been decaying for about a month due to uh, some Docker credential issues, which then as Hydra nodes would try to respawn, they weren't able to, the Hydras uh, were running in, in uh, AWS, they weren't able to respawn. And so they, anytime we've had a slow trickle off, and I think by it was around April 20th, they were fully they were just fully gone. And we went to go check in on the metrics about, hey, it was like it was a round IPFS thing. It was like, hey, we're all together. We should actually make a plan around Hydra deprecation. And then people started looking at metrics, realizing, oh, the Hydras are like dying. And oh, oh the Hydras are fully dead. Um, so the lack of uh, proactive comms was because we didn't realize our, ourselves that this was happening. So that that is a miss that the monitoring wasn't there. Um, but that's it was it wasn't a malicious to not talk about this uh, in in advance. Um, so better or worse, our hand was kind of forced in this, uh, and you know we're accepting it because we know this is what we always wanted. To, we always thought it was good for the network. In the process, though, it was just to kind of give color to that aspect as to why IPNI's traffic has increased. Um, we, it was discovered that Kubo nodes that use the accelerated DHT were not actually calling CID.contact by default. And that is the case for the IPFS.io and dweb.link gateways. Um, and so we the, the, those gateways had been relying on the bridging mode. Uh, the bridge was now shut down with the hydras being dead. And as a result, the, the gateways weren't actually calling uh, CID.contact a fix in Kubo was made for that. There's a 0.19.2 release, which Henry published, uh, which I think is what the gateways have deployed. Uh, sorry, the IPFS.io gateways have deployed, and it's also going to be in Kubo 0 0.20. But that's, um, that's that's really the driver as to why IPF, sorry, CID.contact is getting more traffic is because now uh, the gateways themselves are directly querying the, the IPNIs. So, yeah, so I'll have to say more, we will get a discuss post out this week, kind of informing the community that this has happened. Um, but, you know, while that's still happening, wanted to make sure people are aware of this. Any other questions or comments on this one? I say one thing I'll, I'll call out about, about the Hydras, uh, uh, about the Hydras and, and their death is that, um, it's it's sort of like nice now that things are we'll say say intentional right um so the the big infrastructure is now like specifically targetable instead of sort of sort of amorphously in the network which is only doable because the, the we'll say the the network backbone is is like still solid or is more solid than it than it was previously you no longer need like uh, several thousands of several thousand like nodes like kind of propping everything up which wasn't true several years ago Mm -hmm. um so so that that's very nice uh and the other is that as um cid.conduct has, has like accumulated additional functionality uh as an endpoint beyond just the ipni stuff um which you know involves like you know sort of doing the bridging the other way where you do the cascade or you ask cid.contact to please like go search the dht for you um, and as we add, like, you know, sort of the, the delegated routing, like more spec PRs around this, what people will be able to do is, is sort of target individual routing systems for delegation. Um, and so you could ask, you know, CID.contact, hey, can you do my DHT lookups for me? And then you can check them yourself and be like, is it cheaper for me to ask someone else to do my lookups or would I rather do them myself? And you can sort of check the results either way. Um, and so this is sort of like the sort of the the expansion of like calling out explicitly where the infra lives instead of sort of hiding it in the network so that people can choose to to use it. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Adine. Good good points. 
Great. I think that brings us to the end of the agenda. So we had this bonus item around protocol handlers. Is there anything else anyone else wants to bring up before we let that be a parking lot discussion? Okay, great. Well, again, no, no offense is going to be taken if anyone wants to drop, but I think we're going to try to expose some of the maybe tribal knowledge around the protocol handlers and maybe identify what or if there's any next steps that need to occur around specs, et cetera, um, particularly in light of uh, you know, this is partly of the lens around IRO's interoperability story with other IPFS implementations. So, so I know you shared a bit there, Brendan, Dean, you probably have thoughts or suggestions. I, I guess I'll let you guys take it from here. I'm happy to note take. Yeah, I guess my first question for like Brendan is like, tell me, you know, tell me your concerns. Yeah, tell me, yeah, because that'll, that'll help me understand the lens that that you're thinking about this with. Yeah, totally. I think it's just, um, I'll tell you my understanding. And then I don't really, so the concern is coming from our users, right? They want interop, they want a better story where it's like, it's all IPFS, right? Like our users are coming to us and say, ours is an IPFS implementation. Why can't I resolve IPFS stuff? It's like, totally. Sorry if my camera's dying. Yeah. Um, and our answer is, of course, you know, we, we made a whole bunch of changes in the name of perf and that breaks compatibility under the hood. And so we need to, and now we need to circle back for that because we are happy with where we're at with perf. Cool. We've got a new thing. Great. But we need to go sew this up so that we don't create confusion for people. Right. So I see our responsibility. It's like, okay, cool. We need to figure out a mechanism for getting this to work uh, in, a, in an experience for end users that is just more seamless. And the place that they jumped to first was just this like the hash that you're giving me back from Iro is not something I can basically go to. I, I, I'm reading between the lines a little bit from most of our users, but they're asking that basically like, I want to be able to go and resolve that anywhere. And a bunch of this on our end is going to be just education, right? Like we intentionally didn't, like if we built Beetle to do that and like we have that, but we don't have that story for Iro yet at all. And so what we've been, Thinking our plan of approach for this is actually very, very similar to Boxo, where it's like give people a set of tools and techniques for combining this in a way that works for them. This is going to be on the rough side. That basically says, cool, you want to be able to resolve both of these types of CIDs, great. Where I think it's really important to sort of bring that and surface that back to this group and why I'm bringing this concern to this meeting specifically is making sure that we have our ducks in order at the spec level so that when we say, hey, this is a great technique for, for example, disambiguating a CID that Iro uses from a CID that uh, that is more like it that is in the Kubo sort of lexicon. How do we do that? What's the canonical method for doing that? How do we make sure that that's that functions? Um, that's rather than like wander all the way up into that very broad headspace. I think it's really nice and convenient to just consider the IPFS URL scheme and understand like, cool. Here's a here's like a smaller concrete version of that, and what do we want to do? to make sure that the like compatibility story is good or at least uh, consistent. Not all of this is gonna be like, I think this is the fun of life in the big tent, right? Like it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like, cool, we just have to like make this work everywhere all the time for everybody. Um, instead, this is what, when you do compose the things, can they be made to be composable? And uh, what work would be involved to make, you know, when someone says, hey, I have use case X, but we'd say that we have a clear understanding of how we would do that in a way that doesn't um, complicate matters more than life currently does for any other IPFS implementation. <laughs> so it's a bit of a rant, but like, I think, you know, to, to try and distill this down into something concrete and actionable would be, and it's like, our users are getting back CIDs. We want to give them some clear set of guidelines for how they will interoperate with Kubo data. And we want to make sure that that this advice we give is, uh, comports with what the community wants would be the the, the my okay. ideal way. Of so, there, that. so there's there's like there's two just so I I know which way to start. So there's two levels of the the interop. There's like I did IPFS I did IPFS add in Kubo and I tried to load it with an IRO thing and then there's I did like IRO in IRO add or whatever it is and then I tried to load it with a Kubo thing. Which one are we? Mm -hmm. Which one are which one do you want to talk about first? Yeah, it's it's who's who's running the compatibility. I think we'll probably start with Iran Kubo add, and I want to now load it with Iro. Okay. 
because that that would put work on our side of things. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's I mean, it's not about like which, which side has has which work. It's just a matter of which like just trying to understand like the the landscape, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so to some extent, that one in, in many ways is like, well, you you have a you have a beetle thing, you have an you have an iro thing. Uh, if you get a CID and the thing is, you know, and it does, and it's not, it's not a Blake three CID. Well, okay, I know which one to use now. Uh, I'll go use the Beetle thing, right? Um, yeah, I mean, and that's, I think that's actually my first question, Adin, because like I can technically add, choose my hash function with Kubo, and I yes. could choose Blake three, right? Yes, you can, and yeah, and, and I could decide, and that'll that'll totally function. And now we don't have a meaningful mechanism, like we actually. So with Iro specifically, it is hard coded in the forthcoming spec that it will be the opaque bytes multi-hash type, or sorry, uh, multi-formats type, and the uh, and it'll be the Blake three CID or Blake three multi-hash. You say F zero one five five. Yeah, yeah, the thing that, Blake three the yeah, thing. It'll, it'll, yeah, exactly. It's the it'll raw raw codec, right? Raw codec. Yes. Okay. Cool. And so, so like we always know that Iro is always going to be that. That is still possible in Kubo Lab, mm -hmm. right? You can still use that to represent that data. So my understanding of like the the recommendation and the code I want to write for our users is cool. We're going to write you a system that says try to load this with Iro. If it falls over, fall back to loading this with Beetle. Yeah. So I think I mean that's why. That that sounds like it would it would reasonably that like it would reasonably fly with the the asterisk that like um depending on what the data is and and how people are throwing it around and the shapes of it right uh there's the there's like the graph structure and the hashes and making sure you figure out what you're going to do about that and then there's like the networking layer and what bytes live the networking and content routing and what bytes live where situation right and to some extent, like the the what bytes live where situation and with what transports is uh is just is like an IPFS colon slash slash problem, right? Like that's just that's like the nature of the content addressing thing is I want the data based on like what it is, not where it is. Please fetch. And there are, I think people have considered proposals, which if people are interested, we can reconsider around around like giving in various hints, you know, hints to help the the resolution layers out. But like ultimately all that's sort of optional because you're doing content addressing, right? And so you should be able to get it from wherever. Um, but if we're ignoring that and we're just talking about graph structure pieces, then yeah, right. You could say I I tried, I tried it with, I tried it with, you know, uh Iro and then I, I tried it with Beetle. Uh and and that that did the job. Um and that goes the one way. Now the other way, right? Uh, back in, what's interesting is right. So any data you, if all you're doing is raw blocks, then IPFS colon slash slash raw block is valid UnixFS. A raw block is a valid UnixFS block, so you're good to go. So, but like, right? But it, we we might give you a block that's really big. Well, and so, so that's I'm not the about what protocol we do handler. <laughs> so, that's, yeah. so that's not the Touché. protocol handler's problem, right? right? Because in the same way, if I put in IPFS colon slash slash what CID, that's the DAG PB or UnixFS root CID of a one terabyte file, that's also one terabyte of stuff, right? And so that, that's not the protocol handler's problem. You do have, we'll call it an, an implementation y thing where people who are running gateways today aren't. It aren't able to handle blocks that big because their protocols and their systems don't handle this. And mm -hmm. more than that, and things like the the car file, like the format equals car stuff and format equals raw stuff that are that are that are part of the gateway spec now or the, the trustless gateway spec. It's not really so trustless when if you if you naively include the large blocks. Right, you need like the you need the bow data to make it incrementally verifiable. Otherwise, it's just a big pile of bytes. Right, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. We we don't want to do that. <laughs> right, and right, right, and yeah. and so this is where I'm in. Like, we might want some spec things where we say, okay, 
what we want is like we want to have a, a version of the car format that has support for these large blocks which are going to need signaling with the bow stuff and whatever like in order to make that all happy um and these are areas i'm at least i'm game to explore uh because i think i think i think large blocks are gonna be things people want to use uh and i think that we shouldn't just say no tooling for you uh <laughs> Oh, thanks, yo. <laughs> no, I just, it's, it's just, it's just but, how it goes. Um, yeah, but I think on our end, like, I, I deal, the way I see that side of the conversation is like, we, for, to get into that, we owe a spec and that we can at least make that a starting point where it's like, cool, this is at least how we see the world. It would be, I think, incumbent upon us to take that big block conversation and try to generalize it, say, hey, will other folks try to come up? and like do similar things if so should we make space for that but at least we'll have something concrete that we can discuss before we try and understand what the universe of big blocks in, in the current like because i i would love 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 to do the work of pring support for this stuff back in to uh boxo kubo land and like we've got some enthusiasm for go implementation again i think it's really really incumbent upon getting a good spec yeah. but um yeah, if if there's uh, openness and willingness to accept those types of PRs, we'd be delighted to start to understand the the path forward for crafting that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I spent I spent a I uh, as, as as some people like Steve can attest, I, I spent a lot of time at IPFS thing uh, crushing the hallway track, uh, rather than than the many other tracks. I think I just declared bankruptcy and realized I was going to have to watch all the videos anyway, um, and. Uh, spent the, the the unique time to sort of spend with a bunch of people who were sort of interested in this in a variety of ways. And I think uh, for the for the second year running, uh, we want large blocks came up on the top of the data transfer to do list, which, you know, maybe after you know year one, we didn't do it quite so well. Maybe year two is the year we do it. Um, and I, I think there are ways. Life gets harder. Right. When everything is small and everything can fit into memory, everything is easier and the big blocks is harder. I, my personal opinions, I think that people are going to want these things. They're going to want them for compatibility with the, with the existing SHA-2 things or maybe SHA-1 things. They're going to want them because they like the checksum E functionality that comes with doing it with the big Blake 3 things. It, it feels like it's going to happen. And so we're going to have you know the ecosystem's gonna have to figure out how we can eat the complexity for for this and and make it hopefully not not so complicated um that's my that's my that's my guessing here um but i guess the good news is that at the protocol handler level you're actually pretty safe in the in the iro to everybody else direction because raw blocks mm -hmm. are cool uh, mm -hmm. It's only when you start. If you want, to, people want to start adding other things. Like, how do we? Could I do IPFS protocol handler support for like WinFS, where you start saying, okay, yeah. what's what's our plan here for things that are not Unix FS? Yeah, uh, terminate. Yeah, we can. Right? And that's a, that's a whole other discussion. That's a, that's a whole <laughs> other one. Good one, but a whole other one. Yeah, yeah, and that's I think. Probably like one thing at a time. Like I think mm -hmm. the thing that we're also excited about in researching, as you mentioned, the wire format. Like this is where like the network indexers are providing more value. Is right at the gates. They support not just the content, but the provider and the and the form and the data transfer protocols they speak, so which gives us an opportunity to actually just integrate there. Right. And so part of my thinking is just if we could sort of just design around, assume systems that have that capability, and let's just start there with support and like. Because as uh, reading through the IPN spec, like we, we just start PRing or putting records there now that say, hey, this supports this thing and and do the hand, the protocol handler on the other side. As long as well, we won't do that. We we aren't doing that. But like, I mean, you, you can like, I, I've... for the IRO protocol. Um, that's the only reason I'd like to like make sure that everyone first knows what we're going to advertise under um, before we do that. But you know, it's nice to know that we could do that. And I think it, from our perspective, like leaning into those systems rather than saying like, hey, how do we, you know, how do we understand how to do this in the context of a DHT, which like sort of is right now really tightly coupled with BitSwap. Um, we can sort of save those conversations for later and just focus on the places where it's easier to do these types of integrations. Yeah. It makes just more sense as a starting point to give people like practical benefit 
Um, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't say so much that it's it's tightly coupled. The DHT stuff is coupled to BitSwap. I'd say it's it's coupled to like multi-stream. Mm. Um, right. Because Which it's we like don't your really job is of, yeah. Yeah, your job is to do protocol negotiation when it shows up, and like that's that's kind of what's happening. And I, I think this is part of why people gained had some excitement around um, the proposal around the the composable DHT stuff. Is people were like, I'd like to figure out how to do my thing without having to like set up lots of bootstrappers and all this stuff. And like, could I just do this? Could I just kind of hide out in your space, but like make a little space that's mine within the bigger one? And people seemed totally. pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, I think one of the key things, yeah, with IPNI, the metadata stuff, very, very, uh, very usable and abusable to do these things where we're like, oh, we can we can make our systems behave now, right? Um, and like interoperate with each other with like a little metadata glue until we get the specs all ironed out, totally. which is pretty so cool. So sorry, Dean, I've got a jet. I oh, yeah, agree. No <laughs> Yeah, feel Thanks free, feel free to drop Brennan. Yeah, very, very good. I I have a question for you, Dean, on on this. Um, but yeah, th th thanks, Brennan. Um, to be to be clear, though, well, so two 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 things. If if Iro creates, uh, sorry, if we do an Iro add, we get a large block back that mm -hmm. works from a protocol handler regard. Mm -hmm. uh, and a IPFS implementation like Kubo can fetch it. It just won't be able to do incremental verification. No, no. Yeah. So I mean, Kubo won't doesn't support any protocol that will let me fetch a hundred block, a hundred megabyte Blake three block. Yeah. Uh, and even if it did support those protocols, it has nowhere to chuck the data appropriately because you don't want to chuck things that are one megabyte in the same places that you're chucking things that are one gigabyte because then you're like, what your understanding is of your 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 databasey thing um, kind of goes out the window. So there, there's a there's a lot of assumptions that are baked into the code, but this is why I'm sort of differentiating, like at the which parts of the protocols and code fall apart. Um, so protocol thing, uh, anything that doesn't know about you know the incremental verification chunks, whether they're the mm -hmm. sort of the the SHA two the SHA two incremental IV things or the BOW things. Um, can't do incremental verification and get the data. Incremental verification seems pretty important for peer-to-peer -peer systems instead of, you know, friend-to-friend -friend or, or trusted systems. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, so BitSwap unhappy, GraphSync unhappy, car files unhappy, block requests over HTTP unhappy, uh, bow happy. Yeah. Uh, okay. So how do you want to, how do you, how do we bridge that, how we bridge that gap? Got it. Uh, and, is is the is part of the that's the that's where specs work and then all the implementations that have been built assuming existing the existing constraints if they want to support these things are going to have to figure out how to evolve to you know support yeah. and differentiate them okay very good and there's also an element i of yes we don't have uh, protocols with large blocks we also don't have uh, lib P2P connectivity to these IRO nodes either, right? Yeah, I mean, I, yes, but also to some extent that's like a, I mean, yes, but also if that was the thing that they were worried about, right, you could, if they're going to, if they're, if, if someone was worried enough about this and they wanted compatibility and you wanted to have, mm -hmm. you know, I have, I have my, my BOW protocol that doesn't have, you know, uh, any of the lib P2P ish things in there, that's fine. If I wanted yeah. to use lib P2P tools, I'm sure you could take the same thing, and kind of port it over and add them. Okay. But also, I mean, we have protocols that don't have things like peer IDs in them. People are going to do HTTP fetches. They're going to mm -hmm. do all sorts of stuff. So, like, yep. It it that's, that's fair. It's a new protocol, whether it's a new lib P2P protocol or a new not lib P2P yeah. protocol, I guess whatever That's I have point. my preference, but cool. I think we should support BitTorrent too. BitTorrent's also not a lib P2P protocol. <laughs> yeah. Roger. Okay. Well, very, very good. Well, we, we used the full hour today. Um, thanks all for, for hanging around. I'm going to end the recording and we'll get this up. I'll get this uploaded here shortly, but nice to see you all. And uh, 
yeah, talk, talk to you more soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And Ian, you can let me know if you fit, if you, uh, oh no, it's, uh,